know that maternal mortality is a major issue globally and uh, that is why actually the fifth MDG was actually to reduce maternal mortality by 75%. Now, unfortunately, uh, MDG has gone and assessing MDG, actually there has been a reduction of the global maternal mortality because uh, maternal mortality now is about 235 per um, thousand per 100,000 life birth, uh, which is the global maternal mortality rate, which reduced from almost 500,000. Now that shows that there has been a reduction, but when you look at developing countries, especially somewhere like Nigeria, I think we're still far behind. Uh, right now, our maternal mortality is 575 per 100,000 life birth. Now, that is quite high because we we're supposed to be at about 180 per 100,000 life birth if we're going to reduce from 800 per 100,000 life birth. But right now, we're around 575. Now, that is even nationally. When you come to places like Kano or northeastern Nigeria or northwestern Nigeria, you're talking of almost 1,000 per 100,000 life birth. And you go down south, you might be talking about 300 per 100,000 life births. So really it shows there's a major challenge, um, especially in northern Nigeria. The Udul Zone has six LGS comprises of Udul itself, where the headquarters has been situated. Then secondly, Albasu local government, Ajingi local government, Gaya local government, Sumaila local government, Garuko local government, and last but not the least, Takai local government. So these seven local government comprises of the zone and uh, we have uh, population and uh, people domain in the area. Normally, they are planning and houses and there are much more empowerment and uh, some they are rare carers and a little they are traders. In Udul Zone, under the primary health care management board, we have 191 health facilities within this seven local government. And if you compare women of childbearing age, their percentage, almost 357 southern, we have challenges seriously. And um, there's a lot of disadvantage we have. So in 191 health facilities we have in Udo, it's very little if you compare with the total population and with the population of the women of childbearing age and with the population of under one and the population of under five. So when we compare and contrast with the level of the um, facilities we have and with the, all this intervention that we are going to have as Randa E today, it's very little. We have what we call emergency obstetric care. Now, these are, these are basic facilities, equipment, and drugs that should be, uh, they should be in every single facility that takes care of a pregnancy. Now, if you go to our hospitals, even some of the major hospitals, these things are not available. So if they bring a complication, then you start saying, there is no this, there is no that, there is no that, or go buy this, go buy that. This is a responsibility of the government. They should make all our facilities, basic and comprehensive uh, emergency obstetric care facilities, to have the basic things that are required. And it's not going to take much, you know, just basic things to save life. If you come with eclampsia, you have magnesium sulfate. You come with PPH, you have you have oxytocin, you have misoprostol. You come with a, a obstructed liver, you can have cesarean section, you have, can have blood. You know, simple things that can be available to save life. Now, those have to be av available because right now, uh, recently I, I looked at, you know, uh, facilities, health facilities in Kano to look and see how many of them have this, for, have this services available. Virtually none of them have all these things that I'm saying that should be available in our primary health care facilities and secondary health care facilities, including having four midwives to cover for 24 hours. We live in a very difficult environment where we see a lot of poverty. We see a lot of challenges in health. We, we see challenges in education, in housing, in many other sectors. And we were very happy to partner with Global One to be the representative here in Kano to address some of these challenges in maternal health care. In a couple of villages that um, were identified, 
we started a Rotary project which looked at quality of care in hospitals. And we're working in Sumaila, Take, uh, Sheikh Jidda here in Kano, uh, Gaya, Budil. Now this five hospital for the last eight years we've been taking data, trying to see how women are taken care of, how women come in and deliver in the hospital and the complications we see and what is the maternal mortality and what is the fetal mortality. Now, monitoring this data, I realized that Sumaila was one of the worst community with the worst data. Uh, so one a brother of mine, uh, Faiz Imam, came with this idea of there is an international organization that wants to work on maternal health in Kano. And he forwarded a project they did in the Western, uh, in Western Nigeria. Uh, they worked on mobile, mobile uh, health. And I told him that, you know what? If you want to work in Kano, I don't think it's mobile health that is our problem. Our problem is maternal health. And I have a particular community that I've been working for the last eight years. And I think I'm working in the secondary health facility, but I think we need to do something in the community if we really want to see the impact in the secondary health facility, because I'm not seeing any impact. I'm not seeing any change. We still get people coming with very bad obstetric complications and dying in the hospital. So people come in late in the hospital. There is delay in reaching the health facility. We need to get to the community. So I told him if they want to work in Kano on maternal health, then let us work in Sumaila and let us work on in the primary health care facility and the community, not in the secondary health care facilities. That was how Lighthouse now got involved in maternal health and specifically in Sumaila local government. So we went to Sumaila local government, we looked at their data and their data showed that almost 30,000 women deliver in Sumaila in a year but less than 5% deliver in health facilities and most of them unless they have complication. All right? And uh, we noticed that all the healthcare facilities they had, the primary healthcare facilities, none of them had a midwife, none had a doctor, none had a nurse. They only had environmental health officers as well as community health officers. So we now notice that the major problem is that the hospitals are not well equipped, the hospitals do not have manpower, and the community have no confidence in the health facilities. Therefore, they don't come there. So we now said, what do we do now? We equip the health facility. We now establish two maternity rooms. We provided all the necessary things that a maternity room should have. Delivery beds, CTG, suction machine, all of them that is required, you know. Then we now said, we have to get manpower. So we now trained a doctor, trained midwives, and trained community health extension workers. And then where Lighthouse is going to be paying their salary for one year. Now, we also involved and engaged the community. And we're very lucky to have a community organization that was very willing. In fact, when they saw us building or creating a boho and renovating rooms for their delivery, they now brought delivery beds. They now, you know, went ahead and tiled some of the rooms. It, it means that they are ready to do it since they have seen other people coming to their community, coming to their place to help them. And that, that really made us feel that these people are the right people that we should help because they are also getting up and trying to help themselves. In terms of collaboration, we do a lot of collaboration with partners, just like I mentioned, uh, like uh, MNCH2 in terms of the area of um, uh, maternal and child health. And then uh, today um, we launched uh, two facilities that uh, were renovated by uh, Lighthouse Foundation, which is part of this collaboration that we are doing. Um, these facilities uh, were cited in Sumaila local government. This is based on the observation that the, the maternal indices in that part of the state are not looking very good. So this NGO collaborated with the state to renovate those facilities and provide equipment to the facilities so that you know the women that are coming to assess services in those facilities get the best of care that is available not only renovation and providing equipment they also employed healthcare workers you know uh, including doctors and midwives so that you know they can have comprehensive care in that facility there is no month that more than 300 to 350 women had antenatal from beginning of the year till the end of the year right now in our statistics we're seeing 500 women and 500 plus coming for antenatal care. Now throughout last year, 
you only have two deliveries, four deliveries, maximum of six deliveries. Now we have 20 deliveries this month. Now that is something that is quite encouraging. I really appreciate this effort because every stakeholder that are being involved, the state, the zone, the LGA, much more especially the traditional and the religious leaders. So the next thing we're trying to do is trying to make sure that the community utilize the facility and let them own the hospital. Let them feel it's part of what they should have and what they should monitor. When you have the community leaders looking at what the hospital is doing, monitoring what the hospital is doing, then the hospital will do good. Uh, this kind of strategy is taking place today. It's one of the what we want, to continue mobilizing people, to be aware of the activities of the hospital. We'll continue the same thing we're doing, you know. We know that government will need all the support from NGOs, including, of course, Lighthouse. So we're going to ensure that relationship is strengthened and uh, we provide all the partners in uh, the right environment to be able to work in Kano and also to work with us. So that is my uh, vision. And in the long run, we want to see sustained and continuous improvement in healthcare, in global maternal health in Kano. So with this, we hope that the government will replicate this in other communities. And we hope at the end of the day, the manpower we have trained, the facilities we have left behind, there will be sustainability. The manpower will be, uh, you know, reabsorbed into Kano State uh, uh, services, and then they will continue to monitor what is happening. With time, we're going to see more and more people coming to use our facility. We're hoping that, you know, with time, we should be able to upgrade that facility, probably to a secondary health facility, where we can offer cesarean section and other life-saving procedures that can save our women from dying and our children from dying as well. Our vision is to be able to continue to achieve some impact, helping people alleviate these challenges that they face, making it possible for the disadvantaged to be able to achieve their full potential by giving them the tools to do so, by empowering them, by giving them access to education and making them uh, healthy enough to be able to achieve their own um, objectives in life. Now, we need to know that government cannot do all on itself, especially as regards maternal health. I feel for maternal health, really everybody has to be responsible and have to take uh, you know, the issue of maternal health seriously. Now, the community has a lot to do, uh, professional bodies have a lot to do, international organizations have a lot to do, our philanthropists that have many have a lot to do. Now what can we do? We need to support the government in trying to ensure that one, our community are aware of all the causes of maternal death, they are aware that they need to send their children to school, especially girl child education. We need to send our children to go and learn uh, all the, uh, you know, the professions that are required in hospital, doctors, nurses, midwives, because unless we train our people, nobody will come and help us. So really we need to train our own people to come back to the community and help, or to help ourselves. And uh, basically, uh, when international organizations now collaborate with other people within the community, then we can address the issue of maternal mortality as a whole. Maternal mortality is like a dragon. It's not possible for one intervention to be able to uh, attack or to address the issue of maternal mortality. Everybody has to put his hands uh, on deck if we really need to address the maternal mortality. The government has a lot to do. Individuals, professionals, international organizations, as well as philanthropists, they have a lot to do. And especially the community itself. The community owns its health. And unless they're able to do something about their own maternal health, then they'll be left behind. Thank you.